So you come out to the ticket office and gift shop there. Just walk down the steps. And both places right here. Oh, it gives an overview of what you can expect to find here at the birthplace. There's the gift shop here, the house, the walk of life around it, this Elvis 13 statue there, church, chapel, plenty of uh, areas for picnic, it's far too hot today. There's a bit of a walk then up to the Becoming statue, the overlook, or to the reflections pool. There's your picnic pavilion there, there's all the tables. Yeah, it's covered. There, there. and there's restrooms up there as well. So it's the back of the museum and gift shop there. And up the top of the overlook is where the latest additions are, the latest statues. So it's, we're here on a Sunday, it's only open from uh, one, 1 o'clock till 5 o'clock on a Sunday. So we've got here at 1. We're just uh, going up now to the Overlook as, as I thought uh, a lot of people are heading to get their tickets and to go to the house first so it sort of uh, leaves the outside quite open and uh, free of other people for the pictures. The story has it that as a young boy Elvis and his friends would run the hills and hollows of this 15 acres of property. After one of those days, near the end of the day, perhaps Elvis picked up his guitar and walked up to the Overlook. His hair was mussed from play. <laughs> I can't really say that with a British accent, can you? His hair was mussed from play. A hole in his sock from wear. His clothes were several sizes larger than needed, all this symbolising the poor circumstances of the Presley family. He sat on a milk crate playing his guitar, then looked west toward the lights of the town. Perhaps it was here that Elvis dreamed the dream of a better life for himself and his family. Standing atop the overlook for to see two statues known by one name, Becoming. So this is the Becoming statues. It's a very good depiction of uh, young Elvis sitting up here with his guitar. And of course the larger than life, literally larger than life statue. It's a depiction of his uh, Aloha concert in 1973. This is a depiction of Elvis sitting on the overlook with his guitar, looking towards Tupelo. <laughs> Sean's hot. So there's the story of Elvis going to Tupelo Hardware for his 11th birthday, wanting a gun or a bike, instead getting a guitar which would change musical history. So Becoming, the two bronze statues before you share one name, Becoming. They illustrate the transformation of Elvis the boy to Elvis the entertainer. Each figure represents a slice of life of the same man born on common soil in East Tupelo. And his dream was realised in ways far beyond his youthful imagination, the overscaled statue of Elvis the entertainer represents the finale of one of his performances. Arms outstretched, cape flowing, his head tilted skyward, signifying the end of his performance, but also symbolizing the end of his life. So this pool is reflections. Fans are invited to pause for moments moment of quiet rest amid the beauty of nature. This peaceful garden offers a time to reflect on Elvis's boyhood, the early years of the journey that made him into the amazing man he became. Perhaps reflection on the first 13 years of one's own life will bring to mind families, communities, special individuals and other early influences that have shaped your life. So it's a reenactment show in the actual First Assembly of God Church there. Uh, it's quite interesting actually, there's like uh, projection screens come down the front and the sides and it's uh, actors doing a reenactment of how the 
service might have well, the service might have gone in the late 30s early 40s imagine you're sitting in the pews amongst the congregation and the preacher is a typical Pentecostal preacher very animated it's supposed to be uh, Frank Smith who taught Elvis uh, a few chords of the, on the guitar it's a very good reenactment it's very interesting it's only about 15 minutes that's up this end of the birthplace area so we've got the house down there the museums there uh, the blues trail the blues marker here for his contribution to the blues and just a bit further down on the walk here on the left is uh, the country marker the country music marker so and this is the elvis at 13 statue Got Elvis at 11 at the top of the overlook. And this is obviously 13th, uh, the 13th yeah, depiction of Elvis just before he left to go for Memphis. There's a fountain of life. Nice place to sit and cool down. And the water feature illustrates the years of Elvis's life, representing the traits of humility and generosity flowing together to form a complete circle. So, it was here on January 8th, 1935 at 25 to 5, in the early hours of the morning, that Elvis Aaron Presley was born in this very house. So here's the historical marker outside. Elvis Aaron Presley was born January 8th, 1935 in this house built by his father. Presley's career as a singer and entertainer redefined American popular music. He died August 16th, 1977 in Memphis, Tennessee. Welcome, welcome. Uh, this is the birthplace of Elvis Presley. Elvis was born right here in this room in 1935, 4.35 in the morning on January the 8th. In 1934, his dad borrowed $180 to build this home from Mr. Bean. It's all 450 square feet, the original fireplace, the original stove, except the stove is from the 1800s. It was a hand-me-down for some of Gladys's kin folks. Oh, right, okay, yeah. They had no power and no running water, but that was normal. That was normal back then, you know. Yeah. Kind of it, it was just, that's just the way it was. He never forgot where he came from. He knew what it was like to be without. Yes. He uh, knew. He never forgot that either. No, he no. was very generous. He, he had deep integrity, you know. Trying to cover most things that uh, are in the museum here. We did do it two years ago, so uh, if I missed anything or we need to compare uh, anything, I do talk about the timeline there. Going around this, certainly in the last video, so I'll put a link to that below if you wanna, if you're interested, to take a look at that one. So this is the, the replica of the car that the Presleys packed all their belongings to in November of 1948 when they left their home in uh, North Green Street in North Tupelo and headed for hopefully a better life. Memphis. So that was our tour of visit the birthplace. Fourth time. <laughs> Probably won't be here for a few years now, but uh, not to say we won't be back sometime in the future. Always uh, never gets tired 